Okay, Mikovan and everyone, welcome to a, a let's play of the Forest of Doom. No, I don't want to cancel the one. No, this is what I want to do. Stalking danger. Okay. Good. Okay, yeah, you know, playing back my first impression video of it uh, when I played Blood Bones, um, I was able to better gauge the sound, how it sounds. So, oh, I have to install it. Even though I got it. Uh huh, that's read without illustrations. No, I, I like the illustrations. Um, now that I really know what to expect and how the combat works, you know, with the dice rolls, because of the first impression video uh, when I did Blood Bones, um, hope hopefully it will, you know, won't take as long because I don't have to read, you know, through everything or, um, yeah. The next game that I think I want to try, actually, is one I did about a couple of years ago, and uh, my good friend Grumpy Scam brought it to my attention again, called AI Dungeons, and it's one he's currently been doing, uh, been playing, and he has a Star Trek, kind of, uh, I don't know if it's exactly Star Trek, but it's maybe inspired by it, but it's a science fiction uh, adventure that he's going through, because with that game, AI Dungeons, what makes it quite uh, interesting is it kind of um, takes what you wrote and you know kind of crafts its own you know world it, it generates its own universe um, and it takes information from uh, what it has com what it has compiled from everyone else who played it you know uh, on the internet but anyways let's let's get to this so uh, you know, again, guys, um, you know, if you have not already, do check out Grumpy Scamp's channel. Uh, he has a bunch of Elder Scrolls stuff, so just check it out, you know, see what he has available um, for yourself. You know, he has like uh, 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 Daggerfall Unity, um, you know, and Marwind, but other games as well, uh, some strategic games. Uh, he might even do an AI dungeon uh, game, but um, don't quote me on that. Read? What is gallery? Oh, okay. Okay, let's do it. The Force of Doom is a fighting fantasy game book, an interactive adventure in which you are the hero. Okay, this... This stuff I know already, so I could actually bypass this. Uh, adventurer, hardcore, free read. Play the Force of Doom like an old school cheater. In free read mode, you roll your character exactly the same way you would in adventure mode, but you are given three extra options to help easily negotiate your way through the book, rewind, free choice, and heal. These are accessed through the adventure sheet. You may use all three of these buttons anytime during adventure, except during combat. Rewind button. Oh, yeah, that's... I'm just gonna go for adventure. Adventurer. Oh shit, that is shit. Okay. Oh no, this is very bad, but it's okay. I have I have to take it, you know. Oh 
Okay. In addition to your other starting equipment, you may take one bottle of magical potion, which will aid you on your quest. Each potion contains enough for one measure, so use it wisely. The potion of skill and strength will fully restore your skill or stamina points respectively. The potion of fortune will add plus one to your initial luck before fully restoring your luck points. Which potion will you take? Well, let's go for the healing potion. You begin your adventure with a sword, leather armor, and a backpack containing provisions, food, and drink to sustain you during your journey ahead. By the way, this Force of Doom was the game that enticed me to get this, to want to get this. It's, it's free, but that's what sparked my interest, and um, you know, I was saddened when I found out that I actually had to buy this book as an add-on. It only cost me a couple bucks, though, so it was not bad at all. Um, so I'm very excited to do this one. Rationing your provisions is key to a successful adventure. They may be consumed at any time by accessing the adventure sheet. Each meal restores four stamina. Be sure to pay close attention to your stamina and restore it regular. regularly. Yeah, my stamina is like shit. Your difficulty setting determines how much provisions you begin with. Adventurers and free readers start with 10, while hardcore heroes start with 3. During your quest, you may encounter characters and items that alter your three. Okay, that I already know. Once you have readied your equipment, you may begin. May the luck of the gods go with you on the adventure ahead. Oh. You are an adventurer, a sword for hire, and have been roaming the northern borderlands of your kingdom, having always spurned the dullness of village life. Having always spurned of the dullness of village life, you now wander the lands in search of wealth and danger. Despite the long walks and rough outdoor life, you are content with your unknown destiny. Ah, uh, the world holds no fears, for you are, for you, for you as you are skilled, or you are a skillful warrior. Uh, well practiced in the art of slaying evil people and beasts with your trusty sword. Not once during the last ten days since entering the northern borderlands have you set your eyes upon another person. This does not worry you at all, as you are happy with your own company and enjoy the slow, sunny days hunting, eating, and sleeping. It is evening, and having feasted on a dinner of rabbit, oh, I do love rabbit, for real too. Spit roasted on an open fire, you settle down to sleep beneath your sheepskin blanket. There's a full moon and the light sparkles on the blade of your broadsword, skewered into the ground by your side. You gaze at it, wondering when you will next have to wipe the blood of some vile creature from its sharp edge. These are strange lands inhabited by weird and loathsome beasts, goblins, trolls, and even dragons, all my kind of stings, right? As the flame of your campfire gently dies, you begin to drift asleep, and images of screaming, green-faced trolls flicker through your mind. Suddenly, in the brushes to your left, you hear the loud crack of a twig breaking under a clumsy foot. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting just memories of my first Endless Quest book, Dungeons and Dragons um, game book. Um, and it's the first one of the Endless Quest series uh, in the Dungeons and Dragons world. And it's kind of like that. You meet, um, you meet this uh, halfling, this hobbit, and it's kind of like this. It awakens you in the middle of the night and you, you catch him fumbling through your pack trying to look for food and such things 
You leap up and grab your sword from the ground. You stand motionless but alert, ready to pounce on your unseen adversary. When you hear a groan, followed by the dull thud of a body falling to the ground, it is a trap? Is it a trap? Slowly, you walk over to the bush where the noise is coming from and carefully pull back the branches. You look down to see, an, to see a little old man with great bushy beard, his face contorted with pain. You crouch down to remove the iron helm covering his balding head and notice two crossbow bolts protruding from the stomach of his plump, chainmail-clad torso. Picking him up, you carry such a great detail. You crouch down to remove the iron helmet covering his balding head. So you have an idea what, what you know, everyone knows what that looks like. And to see that, to envision that, to, to get the fine details like that is so great. Picking him up, you carry him over to the fire and stir the dying embers into life. Oh, it's like dying. You just kind of stoke it a bit and the fire starts up again. After covering him with the sheepskin blanket, you manage to get the old man to drink a little water. He coughs and moans. He sits up rigid, eyes staring fixedly ahead and starts to shout. I'll get them. I'll get them. Don't you fear. Gillibrand, big leg, is coming. Big leg is coming to bring you the hammer. Oh, yes, indeed I am. Oh, yes. The dwarf, whose name you presume to be Big Leg, is obviously delirious. Such great names, Gillibrand, Big Leg. The dwarf, whose name you presume to be Big Leg, is obviously delirious from poison-tipped bolts lodged in his stomach. You watch as he, sl as he slumps down against the ground, then whispers his name to in his ear. His eyes stare unblinkingly at you as you again starts to shout, as he again starts to shout, Ambush! Look out, Ambush! Ah! The hammer! Take take the hammer to Gillibrand! Save the dwarves! His eyes half close, and the pain seems to ease a little, and as the delirium subsides, he speaks to you again in low whisper. Help us, friend! <laughs> take the hammer to Gillibrand! Only the hammer will unite our people against the trolls. We we were on our way to Darkwood in search of the hammer, ambushed by the little people, others killed. The map in my pouch will take you to the home of Yastromo, the master mage of these parts. He has great magics for sale to protect you against the creatures of the dark. Take my gold. I beg you to find a hammer. Take it to Gillibrand. My lord of Stonebridge. Isn't Stonebridge the place in um, uh, Dungeon Siege? Uh, Dungeon Siege uh, game series. Um, I think it's still on sale to get all three for only like four ninety five or $5. I think I want to get that. It's a great game. Uh, you will be rewarded. Big Leg opens his mouth to start another sentence, but nothing comes out except his last dying breath. You sit down and ponder Big Leg's words. Who is Gillibrand? Who is Yastromo? What is all the fuss about the Dwarvish hammer? Uh, you reach over to the still body of Big Leg and remove the pouch from the leather belt around his waist. Inside, you find 30 gold pieces and a map. So this is added to my inventory. I love that. You almost have to keep a mental note of these things, I suppose. And here it is. Look at that. Yastromo's Tower. Darkwood Forest Hills. Uh, oh, that's how I do it. Jiggling the coins in your hand, you think of the possible rewards which may await you just for returning a hammer to a village of dwarves. You decide to try and find a hammer in Darkwood Forest. It's been a few weeks since your last good battle, and what is more, you are likely to be well paid for this one. Hmm. With your mind made up, you settle down to sleep, having taken back the sheepskin blanket from poor Big Leg. In the morning, you bury the old dwarf and gather up your possessions. 
You examine the map, look up to the sun and find your bearings. Whistling merrily, you head off south at a good pace, eager to meet this man Yastromo and see what he has to offer. So this, this is more my style. As much as I love pirates, and I do, Pirates of the Caribbean, come on Johnny Depp, even though personally as a person I question him a bit and his morals, but okay. But his acting chops, fantastic, and I've been a fan of him for a long time. And again, love the Pirate of the Caribbean series. But I've always gravitated more towards um, the medieval fantasy uh, world, places like Middle Earth, um, you know, places like uh, 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 Acheron, you know, places like that. Um, you know, the, the worlds of like Conan and uh, and Call the Conqueror, Lord of the Rings, and uh, 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 Tamriel, places like that. Now turn over. Look at this. I don't remember the other one having this many illustrations, right? Because it was a free one. Still a good game, but and maybe one day I'll, I'll finish that you know, off camera. But your walk to Yastromos takes a little over a half a day, and you arrive at a stone tower, dirty and hungry. Uh, how's this doing? Well, it looks like it's okay. Uh, as a tower is set back on the edges of Darkwood, some 50 meters from the path you have been following, it is difficult to find. Okay, so it's like even though I see the tower from afar, you know, just trying to navigate through the forest is, is proving difficulty. Finally, you walk up to the huge oak door, somewhat relieved to find that it does exist and that Big Leg had not been speaking wildly in his delirium. A large brass bell and gong hang from the stone archway. Uh, as you ring the bell, a shiver runs down your spine, and you realize that the, large, the loud bong invades a deep silence, which you had not noticed before. There are no sounds of birds or animals to be heard. You wait anxiously at the door and hear slow footsteps descending the stairs from the tower above. small wooden slot in the door slides oh shit open slides open and two eyes appear and examine you well who are you demands a grumpy voice through the hole you answer that you are an adventurer in search of master mage Yastromo intending to purchase magical items from him to combat the adventure the, the creatures of darkwood forest Oh, well, in that case, if you are interested in buying some of my merchandise, you had better come up. I am Yastromo. He then turns and slowly climbs the stone stairs. Will you follow him up the stairs or draw your sword? No, oh, why? Uh, he's given me a reason to. He just wants to make a sale. for now. You follow the huffing and puffing old man in his tattered robes up the spiral staircase to a large room at the top of the tower. Shelves, cupboards, and cabinets line the walls, all filled with bottles, jars, weapons, armor, and all manner of strange artifacts. Yastroma shuffles past a uh, general clutter and stumps, slumps down in an old oak chair. He reaches into his top pocket and pulls out a fragile pair of gold rim spectacles placing these on his nose he picks up a piece of slate and or slate and chalk from a table next to his chair and begins to write uh, frantically he then hands you the slate oh look at this okay I get to make some purchases I have 30 gold total is that right Oh, 
Oh yeah, okay, I get to pick my portrait. Um, I think... Yeah, I did kind of want to change it up. I I'm gonna go for that. Map. Mark. Yeah, it's like... How am I to remember how much gold I have? You really have to keep a mental note. Okay. Uh, healing potion, potion of plant control, potion of stillness, potion of insect control, anti-poison. Okay, this seems important. Uh, a potion which protects the drinker from the various po poisons. Take one. And I have like 28. Holy water. Ring of light. This seems very important. Uh, but first let me... Uh, I, I better get this one. The wearer of this ring can see into the darkest depths. Okay, so that's like a total of five, so I'm down to 25. I will take a healing potion, of course. It's good to take a couple of them. Okay, so that's six, so I'm down to like 29. No, um... 19 I should say right because I had uh, 25 yeah so 19 plant control potion that allows the uh, Im imbiber to control plants with their mind imbiber I'm learning some new words here probably the user to control plants with their mind uh, no thanks for now. Stillness. Potion that calms the drinker during stressful situations. Okay, so if I'm like really panicked, okay. And insect control. Holy water. Useful against undead creatures such as ghouls. Okay, let's go with that. So that's three. So 16. Thirteen. Eleven. I got holy water already, right? I think that is good for now. Oh shit! You have like more shit. I wish I knew about that. I wouldn't have... Oh, my God. What the fuck? Okay. So I have 11. Jump higher. Yeah, I'll take that. So it's like 9. Magical rope. Yeah. So 6. Enables a wearer to focus solely on this single object despite any distractions. Okay. Um, these fit to your nostrils and will block odors. Yeah, I, I need to take that. So now I'm down to three and... I'll leave it at that. He tells you that all the instructions for use are written clearly on the labels attached to the items, together with their suggested use. He sighs and tells you that, unfortunately, the magic in the items only work once, but they are best you can buy for the money. Okay. So really, so even that light one? Shit. Uh, Yastrumo then asks you to reason for the, the reason for the purchase of the items, and you tell him your story, and your decision to continue, the quest of the luckless big leg. Ah uh, yes, Yastrumo says slowly, rubbing his chin. 
I know that the good dwarves of Stonebridge had lost their fabled warhammer. Without it, their king is unable to arouse his people. Despite the fact that the hill trolls threaten his village, rumor has it that an envious king of another village of dwarves sent an eagle to Stonebridge to steal the hammer, which it managed to do. But as it flew over Darkwood, it was attacked by death hawks, and the hammer dropped into the forest and was lost. Right, okay, that forest. Apparently, two forest goblins found the hammer, but could not decide who was to keep it. They wrestled for hours, but gave up. Hours, really? Uh, then they discovered that the handle unscrewed from the head, and the uh, argument was settled? Really? One kept the head, the other kept the handle. That's okay. Uh, then they parted, each happy with his new treasure. Who knows if they still have them? So I'm afraid your problems are doubled. I can tell you that the head is made of bronze and the handle is made of polished ebony. Both head and handle have the letter G inscribed on them. Your task is not easy. Good luck. You thank Yostroma and leave the room by the spiral staircase. Uh, outside in the bright light, you notice the dead quietness again. No, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, we'll keep it at that. Uh, a narrow path leads northwards from the tall grass surrounding Yastromo's tower into the dense undergrowth of dark wood forest. In a few strides, you are surrounded by the dark and tangled forest. Here we go. Uh, stones and knotted roots seem to hide in the shadows, and you almost believe that they are trying to trip you up. The light fades quickly, and the air becomes moist and unpleasant. Deeper and deeper you go, into the gloom. Eventually, the path forks on either side of a huge old tree. Must be what it looks like here. Oh. Let's go east. The narrow path continues to cut its way through the tangled forest. Strange animal cries and noises echo through the forest, through the trees. At last, the path widens, so approximately a meter across. To approximately a meter across. Soon you arrive at a moss-covered wooden signpost, on top of which sits a large crow. The arms of the signpost read, North and East. Just as you are deciding which way to continue, you hear the words, Good afternoon. You look up in the direction of the voice and see the crow looking down at you inquisi inquisitively. Good afternoon. Oh, <clears throat> this is you. Good afternoon, you reply slowly, feeling a little foolish. The crow speaks again, asking which way you are headed. You reply that you are looking for two goblins, small sinewy creatures with brown scaly skin. One gold piece will buy my advice, states the crow confidently. Will you? What does a crow have to do with gold? But I guess, I don't know. It, it could be like, uh, what is his name? Uh, um, what is his name? Uh, Dao. Oh, I can't remember his name any longer, but in Maleficent. Uh, did it begin with a D, like Dao, Daoi or something like that? Um, the crow, you know, Maleficent's crow. That, that she made into human and can transport transform back and forth human to crow uh, pay the crow for its advice ignore the crow and, well ignore the crow and carry on these words okay and this is why I don't use up all my gold I have three left over so I'll pay the crow 
We put the gold piece on top of the signpost as requested by the crow, after which it says, Go north! We ask the crow why it needs gold pieces. See, I love this. It's like things I'm thinking about and it addresses them. And it replies that it needs 30 gold pieces to pay Yastromo. To turn it back into human again? You bid the crow farewell. I had like 30, you know, and... Like, instead of buying all that stuff, I could have just... I wonder what would have happened if I didn't buy a thing and came up to this point and it would the game detect that I have 30 gold pieces exactly and give it to him. Um, that would be something, you know. If you want to go north as advised by the crow, turn to page 8, if you rather... No, I'm, I'm gonna follow that crow, you know, the advice of the crow. Walking along the path, you hear footsteps and arguing voices ahead of you. If you wish to meet their owners, turn to 317. If you'd rather hide in the bushes, let them walk by. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. As you crouch in the bushes off the path, the voices get louder. Two pairs of spindly legs in tattered clothes shuffle past you quickly, kicking up dirt and dust. The voices soon fade away from the distance. You step out on the path again and press on northwards. What is two pairs of spindly legs? Tattered, spindly. Are they like spidery kind of legs, or like spider legs, like a drow or a daedra or a daedra or something? I don't know. But it's wearing tattered cloth, cloth. Or maybe they are just like beggars or something. Or maybe they intended to rob me. Who knows? To the left of the path, you notice a large hole in the ground with a diameter of some three meters. Walking over to the edge of the hole, you see it sloping off into the depths of the earth. If you wish to walk down the hole, would you prefer to continue walking northwards up the path? Well, no, I'm going to continue. At last, the trees begin to thin out and the shafts of sunlight beam down through the gaps on either side of the path. That's fine. Uh, as the path widens, you see a large cave entrance set a few yards back to the right. If you want to examine the cave, if you want to continue northwards up the path. Wait. And shafts of sunlight beam down through the gaps on either side of the path. As the path widens, you see a large cave entrance set a few yards back on the right. Oh, well, you know, I could find weapons and so Let's go ahead and examine this cave. Okay. But who knows? You know, I don't know exactly how far north so this could also be the hideout of those goblins, or one of the goblins. So let's check it out. Aha! Uh -huh. Slowly you peer into the cave and see the huge shape of an ogre. I wish I could highlight it and read a bit of lore on it, but... Walking slowly over to the wicker cage with a bowl of water in his great hand. He is dressed in animal furs and carries a stone club in his belt. There appears to be a small creature jumping around inside the cage. You may pick up a rock and throw it at the ogre. Rush in and attack the ogre with your sword. Leave the cave and continue up the path. Well, I could catch it by surprise, however... I, I don't know what's going on here. I can slowly go over to the wicker cage. Okay, let me just distract it, you know. Who knows who's the good and, and the bad in this one. 
If you possess a glove of missile dexterity, which I do not. See, look at that. I'm glad that it's some. It's not always on like the honor system when there really isn't an honor system. It just, you know, um, avoids this option here, and I can only pick this one. I do not have that, and I remember seeing that for sale. You pick up a good-sized rock off the floor and take aim. <clears throat> You throw the rock with all your might at the ogre, but are dismayed to see it fly past his head and crash against the far wall of the cave. You curse, but decide nevertheless to rush into the cave to attack the ogre. Oh, fuck. You draw your sword as you enter the cave. The ogre throws down the wooden bowl and lifts the large stone club from his belt. He grunts and lopes towards you. Prepare for battle. You must fight. Winter. Okay, here we go. Currently defeated. Looks like I can't escape. So let's just fight. Here we go. Fight or escape. Right. You both miss. Yeah, okay. I mean, he's slow and clumsy, so hopefully that is to my advantage. Lucky. It is just a scratch. Take one plus damage. What? Oh no. Okay. Oof. Your weapon hits hard. Do two more damage. Okay, good, good. Oh, come on, please. 13, 13. Very bad. Oh. Oh, God. Oh. You're lucky. I was at the edge of my seat. Can you believe that? I love this game. I love it. You are triumphant, but it was not easy. Um, as the ogre slumps to the ground, the creature in the cage jumps around even more frantically than before. Do you take a closer look at the creature in the cave? Search through the contents of the cave. Okay, why don't we, uh... Inside the cage, a small, sinewy creature with brown skin... It's the goblin! Scaly skin is jumping up and down. He is a goblin! Round his neck hangs a black, shiny rod on a leather cord. Okay, wait. I'm able to... Take a healer? How do I do that?
Oh, shit. Just found one of those goblins, right? Yeah, I could use it. Oh, and that's how I know how much gold I have. Okay, this is so great. Okay. Um, all right, all right. I wish there was another option here where I can speak to him. Like, give me that thing around your neck, and then I'll let you go instead of just unlocking it. But let's let's do it. You unlock the door and step back, drawing your sword in case the goblin tries to attack you. He picks up a wooden stool and, waving it in the air, kicks the door open and charges you, screaming. Well, looks good thing I drank the potion, right? Oh, this is gonna be an easy kill. Bend down over the lifeless body of the mad goblin and examine the rod around its neck. The rod is made of ebony, and there is a screw thread at one end. You're excited to see the letter G. That's part of the clue. Uh, is that... This information I know, does it... Okay, so that bit of information I have to remember. Okay, like I thought I could click on the items and it will expand it more information about it like but I do remember you know that that there's a G inscribed on both parts uh, neatly inscribed at the other end of what must be the handle of the dwarvish warhammer you put your find in the backpack and gain plus one luck point do I really yeah I think I did If you wish to search through the contents of the cave, yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. There's not much of interest uh, to be found in the cave. A straw bed, stone jars, a table and chair are all that is immediately visible. But on a stone shelf above the bed, a small silver box catches your eye. So just like in true, role-playing game fashion or D&D fashion, you know, on your adventures you can come across uh, items, gold and treasures and loot that, that will help you on your adventures. And to open the silver box, you would rather leave the cave. No, well, let's open it. You gently prise the lid off the box, but as you do so, a yellow gas escapes and envelops your face. Oh no! No. The gas is the gas is toxic and your eyes start to water. You cough and hold your breath whilst running around the cave, trying to escape from the gas cloud which envelops you. Your lungs feel as though they are bursting and you are forced to inhale. Your skill is reduced by two and your stamina by the amount of one die. Okay, two. That's not too bad. Still stamina left. You're relieved to see the, the gas cloud fade away. You put the silver box in your backpack and leave there. So I just took it with it. It's like a souvenir. Walking along the path, you do not notice a rope noose hidden beneath it. You do not notice 
a rope noose hidden beneath some fallen leaves ahead of you. Your foot catches in the noose and suddenly you're hauled into the air by the rope, which is tied to a sprung tree. In a second, you are hanging upside down, suspended by your trapped foot. your luck. Okay. Six. You are lucky. You needed a luck score of eight or below and rolled a lucky score of six. Excellent. Oh, because it adds to my luck. Right. Your sword remains in its scabbard. Oh, you know what? Um... Yeah. Oh, no, wait. I have provisions, right? This will heal me a little bit. Okay, very cool. to cut yourself down from the man trap. You get to your feet and curse, brushing the dirt from your clothes with your hands. You are tempted to wait around to discover who set the trap, but decide against it. You continue northwards. You notice a knotted vine hanging down to the ground from a tree on your left. You look up and see a roughly made tree house amid the branches. You want to climb up the vine to the tree house, okay? If you wish to continue walking north, oh, let's go ahead and check out the treehouse. Oh no, I just keep getting myself into trouble. You reach the top of the vine and scramble onto a wooden platform. A sheet made from leaves and fern covers the entrance to a small covered living area. As you approach, the sheet is thrown back, and from behind, it steps a large and hairy ape like creature wearing only an animal hide loincloth. That's great. He is holding a large bone in his right hand and grunts at you. He is an ape man. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, draw your sword and attack him. And jump off the platform to the ground five meters below. Okay, I'll just attack. Shit. The ape man is very agile around the tree and you have difficulty brandishing your sword. You lose two from attack strength during each round of combat. at this point yeah yeah I am dead you are overcome by your enemies the ape man is very agile and I am killed you are dead you have been beaten by dark wood forest the forest of doom the end well so ends my adventures. I was even thinking about saving it, you know, once I left the cave, you know, with the first goblin and the, and the ogre, and continue next time. But, um, well, that is a complete adventure, and it was uh, in failure. But it was fun. I, I enjoyed that. Um, now that I know there were other things I could have bought, you know, um, although I might try that thing where I don't 
by thing so when I get up to that part with uh, the crow see if I can't give him all of the gold and you know and he can turn himself human maybe I'll be blessed with either tremendous luck you know something permanent or a, a godly weapon or something anyways that is all I hope you all enjoyed thank you and see you so this will not be the last time that I do this this is great <laughs>